Yes, yes, so Hell is here. Today we have the winner of our recent new artist poll, and that is Dan Vask. I didn't want to do too much digging into him, I like with new artists reading the comments and learn about the artist that way. But he is a Brazilian whose real name is Daniel Vasconcelos, I think. A quick internet search shows this. Interesting, and I know pretty much nothing about metal music. I was first recommended Dan in comments to some of my Christmas reaction videos, because Dan has done some covers to some of the same songs. Aside from that, I've not really been recommended any specific songs, so I went into his channel, he has loads of videos on there, and I decided to find and pick a song that I already know, where the original is not a rock song, or metal, maybe because there were a lot of songs that I've never heard of on his channel. So, by choosing this Adele song, I figured if it's in a metal style it could be very very interesting and hopefully a good introduction to Dan. This is of course Rolling in the Deep. If anyone doesn't know this song by name you've probably heard it. For context it has nearly 2.5 billion views on YouTube. So yeah, that's everything I know about Dan so far, and I've seen pictures of him. His aesthetic definitely suits uh, metal music. So let's just get straight into it. Bringing me out the dark Finally I can see you crystal clear Go ahead and sell me out And I'll lay your shit bare Alright, 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 wow, okay. That is very interesting, very cool actually. I'm gonna go and talk about why in a second and we'll go over some of my initial thoughts into this. If you haven't seen my videos before, this is where I go over and analyze what we've just heard. So if you don't want to hear the analysis, you can go to the timestamp here. Okay, well, first things first, the introduction. Considering the introduction to Adele's song, I can see why he chose this song to cover. In short, what we're hearing are muted guitar strums in equal rhythms. What also makes the guitar part interesting in Adele's version is that every time the chord changes, it happens just after the bar or the measure changes. I'll play some of it and I'll say bar when the bar changes and then chord when the chord changes a bit afterwards. Bar, chord. Bar, chord. It creates this weird and subtle lagging effect. We don't get this in this arrangement of Dan's cover. The changes come at various places, the rhythms aren't equal, we have drums, we have a solo guitar melody. It's interesting. My metal naivete will probably show here, but to me this sounds archetypically heavy metal. So then Dan enters his vocals. And when he does, the guitar mimics what we were just talking about in Adele's version. In the sense the chords change slightly after the bar or the measure changes. This note alteration in the guitar part though is very melodic. It's a nice soft underlayer that contrasts Dan's quite harsh vocals. I use the word harsh from a perspective of contrast, soft versus harsh. But his voice is quite harsh too, it's a bit coarse. It just sounds like a voice that's waiting to fire up into those upper registers of the chest voice. And first thing I've ever heard from him, his style of singing is not what I expected, at least at this part. at least in these lower registers, but again, I know next to nothing about metal music. I don't know what a typical metal style is. This is much more jumpy and melodic than I was expecting. It almost seems like it's pulsating, you know, vroom, vroom. 
it was especially the words see you that stood out to me. Finally, I can see you crystal See you. Right, so then the next verse, he jumps up the octave and the electric guitar as being the other main feature at this point. It's a metal feel for sure. We also hear some nice sustained chords in a synth or something. In the background, in the upper registers. It's less stereotypically metal, in my mind anyway, which is, again, providing a nice subtle contrast between the various musical voices, instruments, components. So he's gone up the octave. I didn't mention before, but he's singing in the same key as Adele's song. So if he stays in this key, he's gonna need to be going very high, at least in his chest voice, which he does, as we see in the chorus. So in the chorus, immediately we get this note here, this top C. If you've seen my other videos, particularly my Dimash videos, you'll recognize this clip. So Dan here is singing this top C, that's the same note sung by the operatic tenor we just saw. It's like a wow moment in the operatic world, you know, it's quite something. Very, very high for your chest voice. This stylistic difference between an operatic tenor and Dan is, I think it's quite interesting to see. So this second time on the words rolling in the deep, same notes as before, but he's now using his head voice for a completely different sound. I mean, it is a slight blend of voices, but very much mostly his head voice. And then for the third time, he goes back to that chest voice. And these repeated words that we're hearing in the backing vocals, I don't know what you'd call this if it's a common feature in metal music. Any metal fans, if you're watching, let me know. But to me, it sounds almost war-like, angry. It definitely creates an atmosphere. And just before we carry on, let me skip back a bit because I wanted to point out another feature which really stood out to me, which I really like. That's these arpeggiated keyboard runs in the background, going up and down. Oh, Who writes these arrangements? Is it him? Uh, okay, I can see in the video description that it was arranged by Biggie P. Fanrath. That's the guitarist that we're seeing. All right, let's 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 carry on. All right, let's have another quick pause there. A few points that I wanted to just go over. How how does someone sing like that and not obliterate the vocal cords? Crazy. I just wanted to make a quick point on the rhythmic importance. As I was listening, I was really drawn to the rhythms of the strummed chords that we're hearing, which are in perfect rhythmic unison with the drums. <laughs> This is a different style of music to popular music, for example, where you'd hear the guitar and the drums as being their own kind of separate entities, the drums or percussion of sorts keeping a constant beat and the rhythm guitar playing and strumming its own rhythms, providing the chords for a harmonic foundation as well as a secondary rhythmic line through strumming. Here, the fact that the two other standout components other than his singing are in unison and are playing something that's rhythmically irregular is very, very interesting and it gives this level of intensity to the performance Naturally, we're expecting one, two, three, four. But what they're playing throws us off that scent. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. See how the accents are offset. And then just after that, we get this really quite nice polyphonic 
musical construction. We see that arpeggiated figure from earlier that I spoke about going up and down. And we now hear what sounds like an independent bass line coming through, which I presume is played on the guitar. The only thing that makes me doubt it's played on the guitar is because of the notes that we hear. Just there, we hear. The lowest guitar on a string is typically tuned to this one here, which means that this note can't be played if it is tuned that way. Now the guitar could be tuned down of course and maybe added in the post-production. Either way, it's a very nice melodic line shining through now. It's very legato smooth and it's providing a nice counter to the rapidly ascending descending arpeggiated keyboard figure that we're hearing. And this combination of these things then emphasizes what comes next, which is this strings effect, you know, maybe played on a synth or something. Repeated chords equal rhythms. And then that leads into the chorus again. And I find it interesting how now, for this time round, how clear his voice sounds when he goes right up again to that top C. See what I mean? It reminds me of those singers in the groups in like the 70s, such as Super Tramp. So then he goes from that clear voice to having this rasp immediately afterwards on the word rolling. And this time, he also decides to sing this repeat again in uh, mostly his chest voice, his full voice. Whereas the first time he did that repeat, he switched to his head voice. And then just one other point before we carry on, I wanted to point out a very subtle but melodic line that we hear in the guitar, which goes like... It's those notes, it's hard to click in rhythm with my mouse on this keyboard. So that line stood out to me, but it's also harmonizing nicely with another guitar line underneath it, which is these notes. All right, let's carry on now until the end. Yeah, there are a lot of cool musical elements in there to, to listen out for. And I'm sure the more I hear it, there'll be more things that will pop out as well. I felt like I wanted to protect my vocal cords after that. The thought of the strain on them. I'll never understand how people can sing like that. I did listen to him talking after the end of the song where he says maybe Adele's music was originally intended to be heavy metal and rock. <laughs> All right, well, let's go over some final analysis from that last section. We started with this almost a cappella section. I don't imagine this is something typically seen in metal music, but maybe it is. Let me know if you know the answer to that. Throw your soul through every I get a sense of camaraderie, which I think is fairly self-explanatory. It's almost like a bunch of men going off to work or to, to war or something. As I said, almost a cappella if it weren't for the beat, and then obviously the guitar comes in. Or maybe it gives me a feeling of something a bit more primal. It reminds me of a song called Change on the Rise by an artist called Avi Kaplan, who's the bass of Pentatonix. <laughs> Without the light, we're singing all day, you can't take. 
I guess maybe because Dan here and Avi there are singing in the same key, it just clicks in my head. If we slowed down Dan here and superimposed it on top of Avi's song, it would work pretty well. If you haven't seen my reaction to Change on the Rise, please do check it out. Card for that will be up here. Anyway, I wasn't expecting this little almost a cappella section. It's a nice addition for variety. I wouldn't say it necessarily fits that well overall in the song or it seems that natural, but maybe the more I listen to this, it will grow on me. A bit later on, we got another section which I think was quite cool. It's a nice little mini story or progression almost from his more melodic singing to the rising guitar scale that we hear to then him moving up and up in his voice to this metal scream. That is an E flat up here. Yeah, it's crazy high to be using you know, most of your full voice to sing that. For context, to demonstrate a normal man singing this who would require their falsetto. So his ranges are really, really being tested. And then finally, when he goes higher, he has to move away from that full voice and goes into this belted, predominantly head voice. Goes up to a G up here. That's just one tone lower than the highest note your typical chorister is expected to sing. Shout out again to this guitarist who did the arrangement. Even that little bit there, way harder than it looks. By the way, on the point that we were speaking about earlier to do with the guitar tuning, to me it does look like the bottom string is tuned to E, which is the standard tuning, because we're hearing this A flat in the bass. And that is where his finger is positioned. E, F, G flat, G, A flat. So that low D we heard earlier was probably added in as a separate track. And then finally to end, a quite a cool pensive opening with this outward breath. There we go. Overall, extremely interesting. From the song choice to the aesthetic, to the arrangement, to his singing style. I never choose to listen to metal music other than a few songs here and there that I came across by chance. For example, by Avenged Sevenfold. So I don't know if this cover here by Dan Vask is considered to be more on the lighter or heavier side of metal. I don't know what metalheads might think of this. You know, it's a completely whole new world to me. <laughs> And based on this, I think there could be some really, really cool stuff out there. There's so much about this side of music that I don't know. So do let me know if anything that I've said or suggested is wrong. If you're familiar with metal music, with its characteristics, with its various quirks, etc. Well, there we go. We have now heard Dan Vask. If you'd like to see me do reactions to more of Dan Vask's stuff, please do let me know in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for watching. We'd appreciate a like and subscribe. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, join the community and take part in future polls, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked below. And I will see you next time.